afternoon party. Stop, stop, stop. Do you clean the lens? You didn't clean the lens. <laughs> I can still record it. Okay, take two. Already rolling. Look at the, look at the beautiful this. There you go, look at that, that's beautiful. Party peoples of the interwebs. This is not only a car vlog, this is gonna be a road trip car vlog. On the way back from the RNC, driving from Milwaukee to Montreal, and I'm catching up on all the news and gonna do a synopsis of the Trump failed assassination attempt plot and the current theories that are floating around. The news so far is that catastrophic failure of intelligence. The woman, Kim Cheadle, who is the head of the Secret Service, the director of the Secret Service, who answers to Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, apparently worked at Pepsi as an executive or something, has no military experience whatsoever, or any, any Secret Service experience. So there's a lot of DEI talk going around. You know, the irony being, they call it DEI, but also D-I-E, DI, Diversity, Inclusion, Equity. Thus far, her explanation is that this was a problem. It should never happen again. Not it won't ever happen again. It should never happen again, as she admitted in her interview with ABC, CBS, six, whichever one, one of those three-letter agency Mockingbird media outlets. She gives an interview explaining the security failure. It's an interview that I believe is deliberate antagonism. It's an interview that it displays such egregious incompetence or lackadaisical lack of concern for the security of the perhaps most important person in the world right now, the leading presidential candidate, former president Donald Trump. Lackadaisical concern. The buck stops with me, but I don't plan on resigning. And it should never happen again, as if we're talking about kids who left the back door open and a dog got out on the street. Not that that ever happened from personal experience, kids, I'm looking at you. She gives that interview, I call it antagonism. She then has the audacity to show up at the RNC, the Republican National Convention, as though she's not number one persona non grata. And I say that it's a deliberate act of antagonism. People correct me and say, no, Viva. She's rubbing it in the face of everybody that she can show up, be a total failure at what she's doing, her one job, and she can show up knowing that she shows up with impunity. I think those are two sides of the same coin. Her showing up after her gratuitous incompetence nearly ended the life of Donald Trump, her showing up as an act of provocation, rubbing it in the face, we're in control and we don't have to answer to everybody, but I have no doubt that she was hoping something bad would happen to her so that she could then say, look at these rabble Trump supporters. They accosted me, they assaulted me, and now I'm the victim in all of this. That's what I mean by um, making herself the victim and provoking, attempting to provoke what would otherwise be a predictable negative reaction from the people who she just betrayed with her grotesque incompetence. Okay, the latest news, the shooter had been identified hours before. He had been identified as a threat, I believe it's now an hour before. He showed up to the protest, oh, not the protest, the um, rally, with a backpack and a rangefinder, binoculars that determine distance, i.e. things that shooters use when going to gun ranges to shoot. Nothing suspicious at all about that, except it was all suspicious. He was first identified as a person of suspicion, and then it turned into a person of threat. Notwithstanding all of that, they still let Trump take the stage. Then he's seen climbing on a roof, viewed by spectators. He had been known to police for minutes prior to the event, and all of this happens when they have said days earlier, released after the shooting, that Iran was allegedly plotting an assassination attempt against Trump because he took out Soleimani. So notwithstanding the fact that they know that Iran, a terrorist nation, was apparently attempting to assassinate the president, all of this security lapse, alleged security lapse, it's an inside job, spoiler alert, all of this occurs in the wake of them knowing that Iran was planning to assassinate Donald Trump. It is obviously an inside job, a let it happen on purpose, Lee hop, or a made it happen on purpose, a me hop, because the FBI intelligence has a history of taking mentally unwell, vulnerable people, brainwashing them, weaponizing them, and turning them into assassins for the state. It's reality, people. It sounds like a crazy person. It's reality. So whether or not it's a Lee hop, me hop, whatever, it's definitely an inside job, and we'll only know in due time whether or not this 
clearly mentally vulnerable individual. Let me just see, I'm going uh, north to Syracuse Airport. Whether or not this mentally uh, unstable individual was known to the FBI or was trained by the FBI. You know, like in the same way that the FBI took mentally unwell people in the Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping fed plot and then entrapped them into inducing them into commit a crime that they would never commit in the first place, that they had no means to commit in the first place. This 20 year old kid, mentally unwell, whatever, whatever. Okay, so we'll find out that in due course. The theories now that are going about are whether or not there was more than one shooter. Chris Martinson, who's been on the channel, I believe twice now, very, very smart man, put out a great analysis, which definitively shows one thing at the very least, that there were two different sets of shots fired. The first three where you have which they're saying is the sonic boom followed by the actual uh, propulsion of the bullet because these are hypersonic bullets. And then there's a round of five or six where it goes pop, 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 pop. And he does a great analysis. There are people floating around that there was a second shooter either on the water tower in the back from a different location, as can be explained by the fact that there are clearly two different sounding sets of rounds. It's a compelling analysis. My only reluctance is, on the one hand, we don't need another shooter in order for this Lee Hop to be an inside job Lee Hop. They do say you need a patsy. This guy was the patsy. He could have never gotten off the shots. Although I've had a bunch of people tell me that shooting anything at 130 yards is very easy, even for an amateur shooter. People are saying he wasn't the shooter. He was the patsy corpse to be left over afterwards. There were other agents or players who fired the shots that missed, but for the grace of God. The only issue with all of that is you don't need the second shooter to explain away that this was, in fact, an obvious inside job. My only question is, I want someone to steel man the different sounds of the shots because they clearly are three separate shots, and then the pop, 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 five shots, which are more of a pop. Thus far, the most logical explanation is that the second round of shots were the snipers trying to take out the shooter, and the first three shots was the shooter shooting on the crowd. The issue there, if those five pops were the snipers trying to take out the shooter, then you would have five, presumably, bullet holes somewhere in the vicinity of the shooter, so that should be borne out by the evidence. The other question is if the shooter only shot three shots and hit four people, Trump, Corey, and the two others who were injured, how can that happen? One theory is that the first bullet hit Trump in the ear and then another spectator, and then the two other bullets took out Corey in whatever combination that occurred. So that can be explained away, but that also would be borne out by the evidence. Three shots on the crowd, you'll only have three bullets on the crowd. If there's more than three shots on the crowd and you have three shots sounding one way and five shots sounding another, then you can really start asking questions as to whether or not the steel man of the rebuttal, that the five pop 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 pops were the snipers on the shooter, that wouldn't make sense anymore. That's where we're at right now. But the bottom line, Kim Cheadle needs to be charged jailed and convicted. And I say that as a joke. Yes, there's a thing called due process. It's hyperbolic. But one thing is for certain, if we apply the January 6th standards to this, oh my goodness, you can charge jail and then you can worry about convicting years later. Grotesque incompetence. I don't think the buck stops with Kim Cheadle. Her name is Cheadle, by the way. I'm just going to cheat a little. Cheadle. It doesn't stop with her. It goes up to Alejandro Mayorkas. And I think this was clearly an inside job, let it happen on purpose, and needs to be kept on blast. If you can believe this, you go to CNN Digital yesterday, there's not one story on the front landing page about the assassination attempt, the failed assassination. They were covering the RNC, they mentioned the assassination in Trump's speech that he is giving his first speech after the attempted assassination. They've just moved on. CNN's moved on. Other MSM legacy Mockingbird media outlets have moved on as if we are supposed to move on from the Lee Hop assassination attempt on Donald Trump, but for the grace of God, had that bullet caught its mark, we would be in World War III right now. It would be Franz Ferdinand 2.0. Just move on, forget about it, it's over. Now get back to calling Trump a rapist. All right, that's the latest. And um, we'll see what the crowd has to say about whether or not a road trip car vlog is good enough. Are people gonna complain about the audio? How have the kids been so quiet? <laughs> Inquiring minds wanna know. If you like what I do, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and make sure that you get the notifications when my videos come up. Drop a comment, it feeds the algorithm. Viva Fry on Rumble. V Viva Fry on Twitter. And Viva Barnes Law. Locals.com for the best above average law community out there. 
And these kids are learning something that they would never learn at school. They're learning politics, they're learning ballistics, they're learning how the world works on the road. This is more of an education in one week than they got all year in school, which means if we do another road trip, if we do another road trip, the puppy up. <laughs> we can actually skip another year of school. <laughs> That's not true, kids. Don't get your hopes up. All right. Peace out, peeps.